Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, deputized the Chairman of the Board of Directors of Injaz Bahrain, Her Highness Sheikha Hassa bint Khalifa Al Khalifa, to attend the honoring ceremony of Her Royal Highness's Award for Encouraging Productive Families 2023 in its 16th edition in the presence of a number of senior officials. Her Highness honored the winners and expressed thanks and appreciation to the efforts of the Ministry of Social Development in adopting this award to motivate productive families and support the national economy. She praised the development of the productive uh, products of productive families and called all institutions to facilitate the way for these families and market their products. The Minister of Social Development, Assam al Asfour, expressed thanks and appreciation to Her Royal Highness for patronizing the event since 2007 for her keenness to empower productive families and provide them with high living standards. He praised the successes of productive families in Bahrain and hailed the support they receive in order to achieve economic security and social sustainability in addition to social investment. The President of Tunisia, Qais Saeed, received Arab Interior Ministers on the occasion of the 40th session of the Arab Interior Ministers' Council. The President welcomed the Ministers and affirmed the importance of such meetings, enhancing joint Arab security, and wished the meeting success. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, headed the Bahraini delegation in the 40th session of the Arab Interior Ministers' Council meeting, which was chaired by the Palestinian Interior Minister, General Ziyad Habarrih, who received chairmanship from Oman's Interior Minister, Hamoud bin Faisal Busaidi, the former chairman.
The Minister of Interior then delivered the following speech. إلى فخامة الرئيس قيس سعيد رئيس الجمهورية التونسية الشقيقة على تفضله بالرعاية الكريمة لافتتاح أعمال هذه الدورة معبرا عن شكري لمعالي الأخ توفيق شرف الدين وزير الداخلية بالجمهورية التونسية الشقيقة على ما لمسناه من حفاوة الاستقبال وكرم الضيافة كما أتوجه بالشكر إلى معالي الأخ السيد حمود بن فيصل البسعيدي وزير الداخلية في سلطنة عمان الشقيقة على ما قام به من جهود مشكورة خلال ترأسها للدورة السابقة للمجلس معربا عن شكري لمعالي الأخ الدكتور محمد بن علي كومان الأمين العام للمجلس وكافة العاملين بالأمان العامة على الجهود التنظيمية والتنسيقية الطيبة أصحاب السمو والمعالي الحضور الكريم أستهل كلمتي اليوم بالترحم على أرواح ضحايا الزلزال الذي ألم بالجمهورية العربية السورية والجمهورية التركية داعيا الله عز وجل لهم بالرحمة والمغفرة وأن يلهم أهلهم وذويهم الصبر والسلوان وينعم على المصابين بالشفاء العاجل لقد شكلت هذه الكارثة موقفا إنسانيا لتقديم العون من مختلف الدول في العالم وفي هذا الخصوص فقد بادرت مملكة البحرين بناء على التوجيهات الملكية السامية من لدن سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه وبمتابعة من صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله بالمساهمة في إغاثة المنكوبين من خلال إرسال فريق البحث والإنقاذ التابع للحرس الملكي بقوة دفاع البحرين وتشكيل لجنة وطنية لدعم الضحايا وتجهيز وإرسال شحنات المساعدات الإغاثية العاجلة إن الأمر يدعونا إلى تعزيز قدراتنا في مجال الحماية المدنية والتدريب عليها بشكل مشترك وتبادل الخبرات بما يسهم في تعزيز التنسيق الميداني لمواجهة الأزمات والحد من آثارها وتداعياتها السلبية حتى نتمكن من مساعدة بعضنا البعض تحقيقا للاستدامة المطلوبة في هذا الشأن أصحاب السمو والمعالي الحضور الكريم لقد شهد مسرح العمليات الأمنية في العقد الماضي واقعا خطيرا تمثل في الجرائم المستحدثة التي انعكس تأثيرها على السلم والاستقرار الأهلي الأمر الذي أوجد مستوى جديد من التحدي والتهديد من خلال ظهور العديد من الجرائم في مقدمتها الجرائم الإلكترونية أو الرقمية وما تشكله من تحد في المجال الاقتصادي والهجمات السبرانية كمصدر تهديد للأمن القومي إضافة إلى المنصات الإلكترونية التي تستهدف الأطفال والشباب أضف إلى ذلك استخدام الطائرات المسيرة باختلاف أنواعها في ضرب المصالح الحيوية ما أريد الإشارة إليه بهذا الصدد إن التعامل مع هذه التحديات الأمنية لا يتوقف عند إجراءات التصدي وردود الأفعال الأمنية وإنما يتطلب الأمر إجراءات استباقية وأكثر إيجابية وفعالية لمواجهة هذه المخاطر ومنع وقوعها أو الحد منها من خلال سن التشريعات التي تواكب هذه التحديات ووضع ضوابط تقنية صارمة لضبط استخدام الأجهزة الإلكترونية بالإضافة إلى تعزيز التوافقات الدولية للمحافظة على أمن المجتمعات وفي هذا الإطار أنشأت وزارة الداخلية بمملكة البحرين وحدة حماية الطفل في الفضاء الإلكتروني تنفيذا لبنود الاستراتيجية الوطنية للأمن السيبراني 
المتعلقة بحماية الطفل وتوعيته من المخاطر التي يمكن أن يتعرض لها أصحاب السمو والمعالي الحضور الكريم وإني أختم كلمتي بالإشارة إلى أن المحافظة على أمن وسلامة المجتمعات واجب أمني وإنساني وأخلاقي يتطلب منا التكاتف وتفعيل الجهود الأمنية بكل أدواتها وأؤكد هنا على أحد المحاور الرئيسية التي تشكل أساسا أصيلا في سعينا لحفظ الأمن والنظام العام في مجتمعاتنا العربية وهو المحافظة على القيم والعادات والتقاليد العربية الأصيلة التي تجمعنا إذ أن قوة المجتمع من قوة الأسرة وعلى كل حال فإننا منفتحون على العالم الذي يحترم تمسكنا بهذه العادات الأصيلة أتمنى لاجتماعنا التوفيق والسداد لما فيه خير أمتنا وأمن شعوبنا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله The Interior Minister met with his UAE counterpart, His Highness Sheikh Saif bin Zayed Al Nahyan, where he praised the bilateral brotherly relations and the mutual keenness to enhance the bilateral cooperation in all fields. He praised the firm stances of the UAE towards Bahrain. The Interior Minister also met with his Egyptian counterpart, Mahmoud Tawfiq, where he praised the bilateral brotherly relations and affirmed keenness to further enhance the bilateral cooperation in all fields. They also discussed topics of common interest regarding security and enhancing cooperation and coordination in order to overcome security challenges on the regional and global levels. The Interior Minister also met with his Lebanese counterpart, Judge Bassam Maulouy, where they discussed security cooperation in addition to a number of topics that aim to enhance the bilateral coordination. The minister was accompanied by the ambassador of the Kingdom of Tunisia and a number of officials. The Interior Minister also met with his Yemeni counterpart, Major General Ibrahim Haydan, where they discussed topics regarding enhancing bilateral security cooperation in addition to a number of related security topics. Meanwhile, the Minister of Foreign Affairs met with his Albanian counterpart, Meiji Fino, where they discussed the bilateral relations and ways to enhance the bilateral cooperation in all fields. They also discussed topics of common interest. The Minister of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture toured the Rafah Central Market Development Project and the first stage of developing Ain al Hnainiya. The Minister met with a number of citizens and listened to their feedback and various service needs, affirming the continuation of implementing projects that serve the residents. He affirmed the Ministry's keenness on developing central markets to make them a convenient destination that meets daily living needs. During the tour, the Minister listened to a briefing on the progress of the two projects. The Minister of Tourism, Fatma Sarifi, met the Chairman of the Airports Council International, Oman Airport CEO, Sheikh Ayman bin Ahmed Al Hosseini, on the occasion of Bahrain Airport Companies hosting the 67th meeting of Airports Council International. A side of from Bahrain's success in hosting this event, which reflects its standing as a major destination for specialized international conferences and exhibitions. She stressed the readiness of the Ministry and BTEA to activate cooperation with Airports Council International within the framework of the link between the tourism and the air transport sectors. 
Under the patronage of the governor of the Central Bank of Bahrain, Rashid Al Maraj, Rain Company held the official opening ceremony of its new headquarters. The ceremony was attended by the CEO of the Economic Development Board, Khalid Ahmedan, and a number of senior officials. Rain's opening of its new headquarters comes at a time when the region is witnessing steady growth in the financial technology sector, in which Bahrain takes a leadership role, being a regional hub for innovation and entrepreneurship. The opening of new Rain offices gives the company the opportunity to better serve its local and regional clients. The company seeks to take effective advantage of all the opportunities available in the regulatory frameworks that support the encrypted assets sector in the kingdom and in the advanced integrated system of financial technology. The story of Rain is that four crypto entrepreneurs came together from across the world uh, to start a company. Uh, we made contact with the Central Bank of Bahrain in 2017, uh, worked with them for two and a half years uh, to um, help create a crypto regulation around crypto. And uh, we're licensed in 2019, and we've done a lot of really great work since then. You know, we've done over three billion in volume. Uh, we've onboarded over half a million clients um, that are approved to trade, and we've uh, we've raised over 120 million dollars from the likes of Kleiner Perkins, Coinbase, and Paradigm, and uh, Middle East venture partners. Uh, so we've seen a lot of success, and, and this office is really a symbol of that legacy in Bahrain, and we really we couldn't have done it without the Bahraini community. The crypto asset just started uh, three, four years ago, uh, and it was not regulated. Uh, started in, in the U.S. and other countries. Now it's grown up. It's uh, now became a part of uh, fintech. And Bahrain, we are proud that Bahrain has licensed the first uh, crypto assets company, which is Rain Management Bahrain, based in Bahrain. And this will boost the uh, economy, hopefully, in Bahrain uh, through uh, maximizing trading, as well as will boost the education, will be hub for, tra for training uh, Bahrainis and others to be part of this a new market. I think the expansion and new office that Rain has opened here is a landmark uh, in the development of the ecosystem locally. I think you know cryptocurrencies are still going to be the future. There's a lot of development that's happening there, um, and this opening of this office, the expansion that the Rain has, uh, is really uh, uh, going to do a lot for our ecosystem, bring a lot of attention to Bahrain, uh, train a lot of people, locals, into the industry, and improve generally what's happening in the cryptocurrency industry locally. Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority announced that in cooperation with Bahrain International Circuit, a number of tourism and entertainment activities will be held during the Formula One event. The BTEA organized several marketing campaigns and promotional activities, in addition to partnerships with international tour operators to attract more tourists from several promising markets. BTEA CEO Nasser Qaidi said that the Formula One race is a huge part of Bahrain's successes, which raised the status of Bahrain on the international map. He affirmed the authorities' continued efforts to exert further efforts with its partners to attract thousands of tourists. BIC CEO Sheikh Salman bin Isa Al Khalifa affirmed that the kingdom continues to host one of the most major sporting events, which affirms the kingdom's ability to host such high-profile events. Under the patronage of the Crown Prince and Deputy Ruler of Charja, His Highness Sheikh Sultan bin Mohammed bin Sultan Al Qasimi, and an honoring ceremony was held for the winners of Sharjah Excellence Award 2022 in the presence of a delegation from Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry led by Samir Nas. The National Bank of Bahrain won the Sharjah Excellence Award for Gulf Excellence. On the occasion, Nas affirmed the role of Bahrain's private sector in highlighting Bahrain's economic status and international events and enhancing its advanced investment attracting organization environment through participating in regional and international competitions, hailing the victory of NBB. The number of travelers through Bahrain International Airport increased in 2022 to reach 6.9 million passengers, an estimated increase of 127.5% over 2021. These positive indicators come as a result of the success of the Kingdom of Bahrain's government plan, which was previously set to upgrade their air transport system and enhance the role of the Kingdom of Bahrain's airports on the global map of airports. These numbers prove the vitality of the tourism movement of the Kingdom, which reflects the high status of the Kingdom on the international level. Sebastian Loeb recorded a stage victory for Bahrain Raid Extreme and the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge to reinforce his title bid in the World Rally Raid Championship. Loeb and co-driver Fabian Lurkin 
and the BRX Pro Drive Hunter collected maximum championship points on the day by winning the rally's special stage with 6 minutes 59 seconds. If the nine-time world rally champion can close with another st came close with another stage victory, he will carry a 16-point championship advantage over the Qatari towards April's third round in Mexico with others to follow in Argentina and Morocco.